Yes, we have found the Angama Pride uh, with the aid of a parked vehicle here. And there they all are. You can see them there. In fact, they're not all there at all. It's, it's three lionesses, I think, and a couple of the cubs. I'm sure the rest of them are in the uh, laga. I don't know why I find it so difficult to say the word laga. I suppose it's because it's not a it's not a word that is um, familiar to me and it feels a little twee just tossing it in there anyway lugger for those of you who don't know ditch basically and there's a ditch here that they spend a lot of their time in this pride of lions there are no wildebeest around here they did kill one yesterday and eat it i've seen the remains thereof and so i think they're probably all in fine health but what is interesting is that i think that there are only are there two or three lionesses here? Two I think there are two lionesses. I think you're right. So the other two are somewhere around. Possibly. Might be even here. Might be even in here. Ah, yes. But there doesn't seem to be much hunting going on. And as it's already starting to get a bit warmer, I don't think they're going to do a huge amount. So let's spend a bit of time here. And then we'll press on down to the south and see if we can't find something else. It is the most beautiful morning. It really is. It's very special to be out here. And although yesterday I wouldn't describe the day that Fergus and I had as roundly successful from a broadcast point of view, we drove through some magnificent areas. And so just being out here uh, during the daytime is a great pleasure. Even if it is you looking at the back end of a flat cat. Now for those of you who don't know, the Angama Pride consists of four lionesses and 13 cubs. And we've, we've made a long story about the fact that they've been waiting for the migration and how they coped without it and blah, blah, it's been so desperate, fish paste, fish paste. I've come to think that we've spoken a little bit of rubbish on that score. I think that these lions do very well in the absence of the migration. I think there's a huge amount of food around all the time and that the migration time is simply more of a bonus than it is a time that they absolutely need. I think the lions are the other side there. Should we move the other side there? A little cub stalking buffalo, that's quite fun. Um, Michael, you're wondering about whether or not these animals will follow the migrating herds. Will lions go out of their territories to follow migrating herds? The answer is no, they will not. Uh, you will, however, find nomadic male lions, which could easily follow herds. This is fascinating. This lion cub is stalking buffalo. I mean, it's not going to kill a buffalo, I don't think. It is fascinating. Left the others. Uh, you know, the safety of this ditch is always at hand. But, I mean, a buffalo will kill a lion cub. We know that. There it goes. Just down through there. Sneaking down into the ditch the side of the bush. Ah, there are a whole lot more lions there. And they're looking at... Is that English? There are a whole lot more lions. No. There is a whole lot more lions, or there are some more lions. Let me just get the other side of this vehicle, and then we'll be able to get a head-on of these cubs that have, uh, well, very ambitious ideas of what they're going to be able to kill. If they want to kill buffalo, they need to move to the Sabi Sands, don't they? There we go. Is that right, folks? Mm -hmm. Ah, there are quite a few in there, aren't there? Mm. Watching the buffalo, walking slowly closer and closer, which is quite fun. And there are the beefies. And as I've said a few times before, I don't think these lions kill buffalo very often here, if at all, because they don't have to. There's so much else to eat. And there's so much else that is, uh, well, shows a less in, shows less enthusiasm for Leo side, shall we call it. I made that up, Fergus. Do you like that word? Yeah. Leo side. Mm. 
<laughs> Leo side. The killing of Leos. Ooh, going down into the ditch. The beef. This is going to be quite interesting. Oh, I see the cubs are beating. Not a hasty retreat, but a certainly a, a tactical retreat. I don't think the buffalo are aware of them yet. But we have watched these cubs running from buffalo fairly often in this area. They sort of set them up, set themselves up on a termite mound or somewhere around here with an easy escape route and then they wait and they watch. And even from this young age, their fascination and curiosity with a potential prey item almost overwhelming. Now, Tony, as I just said, um, the, you want to know how many members of the pride there are. There are four lionesses and 13 cubs. And I don't know where the other four lionesses, or two lionesses are. We've seen two of them so far. And we've seen, I think, four cubs so far of different ages. The youngest probably born around, at least oldest probably born around February, and the youngest born just a few weeks ago. Yeah, the cubs are now moving off in towards the lager. And just to let you know, this is a non-off-roading zone, so we can't sort of drive in after them, but we've still got a nice view. I'm watching the buffalo to see what they do. There's a tiny little buffalo there. The adults see that. Well, they'd probably think about it. There's a tiny little buffalo there. The adults see that. Well, they'd probably think about it. That'd be very silly. Because the adults would not tolerate it. I've been astounded by the lack of willingness of the wildebeest to defend themselves and you know I've spoken quite extensively over the uh, months about animals that have both male and female with horns and why that should be the case and the only explanation I can come up with is that they're used for defense but I have yet to see, I've seen one wildebeest turn on one of those male cheetah and other than that, the wildebeest don't seem to do much defending. They just seem to run around in blind panic and become eaten or dead. Ferg, I think you're being stalked. Mm -hmm. No, not by a buffalo, by a small lion. Is this, uh, let me move. Shall I move slightly? You're right. Very pretty indeed. Breeze blowing still from north to south. Northeast, actually. Yeah, northeast to southwest today. So, excuse the sound now, I'm just fixing my microphone. Here yeah, they're coming around to see. You see something you might want to eat there, chaps? Three ages, I think, there. The oldest one in the middle. And two very little ones just behind that. Another one coming, so that'll be total to five. I just don't want to start the car now. I think they might get a bit of a fright. Little ones are walking straight towards the road. I am going to move very slightly. Clerg, you ready? a vehicle there obviously you can see those are just tourists much the same as you would see at Juma and they should just pop out the other side of that bush the buffalo moving now to the other side of us there they come hello he's the little leader of the gang 
<laughs> I think that's wonderful. Tony, you want to know how many pounds of meat a lion cub can eat? Um, Tony, it rather depends on the age of the lion cub, I suppose. A one-week-old lion cub won't eat any meat at all. A lion cub up to, the, say, a year old, uh, which probably weighs in the region of... What should we say, a year old lion? Probably 50 kilograms or so, 110 pounds. Can eat probably 20% of its body weight. So 100, 20% of 100 is, um, unsurprisingly, 20. So probably about 20 pounds of meat for a year old cub all the way down to zero. That little one there that you're looking at is probably about six months old. and it will grow exponentially from here. They grow very slowly almost until they're about this age, and then they get bigger very quickly. And the one behind there, just about, ooh, what should we say, about eight weeks old now? Maybe a bit older than that, actually. I'm not sure those are the very smallest ones. just fascinated by watching the buffalo moving. Buffalo not vaguely concerned, all of them now crossing over this ditch. Deciding, probably a little bit like the wildebeest, that the grass is greener on the other side. Smallish herds of buffalo here that I've seen now. You know, this one's probably about 55 strong. It doesn't move very far from this area. It kind of lives in an uneasy equilibrium, I suppose, with the Angama pride. There's one checking us out, smelling a bit of lion, thinking those people smell a little bit like lion. Don't think I like that. Alrighty, apparently we're going to go across to Tristan now because he has got the home of a scavenger.